going on guys len here i uh, know it's been a minute since i've uploaded this channel but you know today i just wanted to kind of uh jump in talk about you know my experiences with dawn trail 7.0 um with the you know msq battle system other things just sort of chill out and and talk for a little bit i haven't really been making videos on this channel uh, for quite some time, and that's mostly because I'm I'm doing stuff on on a different channel. Um, I'll link it down in like the description if you're interested at all. But it's it's like fighting game stuff. <clears throat> See, I kind of convinced myself that uh, on this channel. Well, we'll talk about that later. So just as a disclaimer, I'm gonna be talking openly about all the content I, that I've experienced so far in. Uh, in Dawn Trail, if you don't want to hear any sort of spoilers on any of the systems or gameplay or MSQ, I just suggest dipping out now. On screen, it'll just be like my character chilling and random gameplay stuff. So Dawn Trail launched uh, two weeks ago, almost at this point. Um, at the time, I was just kind of chilling. Uh, I had to actually house sit for my parents. So I was watching their dog and stuff like that. Um, brought my setup. I brought my setup over because I was like, oh, the timing. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, that was pretty cool. I had to work. Unfortunately, dude, life sucks. I hate working. Um, but, you know, I think I got through the story by the following Monday. Yeah, I think it was Monday when I finally got through the MSQ. I pretty much only did MSQ up till then. I stopped for roulettes a couple times. Did roulettes with friends a few times and and chilled out. It was really nice, you know, having all the homies uh, back in hanging out in the Discord for once, like the FC members and Static members and friends. It's weird because like I feel like I didn't have that experience in Dawn Trail almost ever. Like outside of Savage rating, I feel like I barely played 14 in Endwalker. Um, hopefully I don't accidentally call Dawn Trail and Walker and Ed Walker Dawn Trail in this video, but I probably will. Yeah, we, it was chill. I got to hang out with some friends, talk to people I haven't talked to in a while. That was really nice. Servers went live. I wasn't at home. Um, but luckily I got home early the day of and was able to hop on and pretty much no problem. Honestly, I didn't have a queue and it was 930, 10 o'clock central time. It was like 930 central time. So, you know, it was, it was pretty chill. It was, it was nice. It's crazy that there was no queue at that time because I figured it would be peak. Honestly, because of all the DDoS attacks that happened leading up to Dawn Trail, I just sort of assumed servers would be completely borked for a couple weeks. Uh, that's mostly why I didn't take off work or anything. And my plan of attack was simple. It's like, just do MSQ. You know, I always... First thing I do is MSQ when patches go live, when servers go live. And that's mostly, I'm not even, I wouldn't consider myself the biggest fan of the FF14 MSQ. Like, I think it is pretty good. Um, and I, I always enjoy it. But, you know, I don't play for the MSQ. However, I just want to get it done so I don't get spoiled on things and like, you know, all of that. Plus doing MSQ helps you, you know... Uh, unlock everything and yada yada like unlock the EXs and and like access to everything expert roulette all that um so yeah I, I kind of beeline the MSQ the last couple of weeks have done a lot of uh fate farming uh, it's you know usually when Xbox launch I just try and do the fate farming first things first uh as you can see I love this parasol so I was like doubly um interested in in doing the fate farming uh <laughs> and you know there's a lot of fates the weird thing about fate farming when these uh x-pax launch is it's 66 fates per zone six fate or six zones so it's three oh let me get my math right 396 396 fates and when you're when you have the number and you're watching it slowly go up per zone it feels like it takes forever but in reality, it takes about two hours per zone if you've got like decent parties or if you make your own party. Yeah, you know, I highly recommend anyone wanting to do the fate grind or currently doing the fate grind to take charge and sort of make sure you call out the marks. And uh, especially right now with multiple instances, like do the instance hopping 
for the group if no one else is doing it like sort of take take lead sometimes it sucks because you'll hop instances and then a different fate popped in the instance before and you have to like you'll, you'll call out a mark and they'll be like oh but we have one so you have to double back but like other than that it's it's nice it's more efficient to just sort of call out the marks something i learned i thought the fake grind was fine uh you know a lot of the zones are sort of intentionally segmented into two sort of mini zones uh if that makes sense um shallowani is probably my favorite just to do the farming and it's not my favorite zone uh, my favorite zone's actually this one it's heritage found I, was, I just like i'm a big fan of the juxtaposition um between like the tech and the uh you know the the like stone houses stone buildings it's really cool to me but yeah fates are done that helps me level up uh currently i've got four jobs leveled uh dragoon which i did in the msq uh reaper which i did through a mix of fates and wonders tales and roulettes uh same with ninja it was mostly fates i did ninja with mostly fates and grabbing the uh, Aetherite quests as I was playing and doing Fates as I was doing the MSQ, I would switch to Ninja if I saw Fate and just did that. You know, I didn't really run into any kind of XP lock. I hear that some people have. I don't really know how, to be honest with you, because um, I was far ahead and I didn't really do anything extra on Dragoon, man. Like maybe I just had more uh, bonuses like through my FC and stuff and I think the Menfina, or not the, is it Menfina's earring? No, that's not right. The Zima's earring, whatever the pre-order earring was, that works from 90 to 91. I don't, I'm pretty sure that works from 90 to 91 and I don't know if people know that. So yeah, you know, at all those buffs, maybe that's why I got so far ahead. Um, but you know, I got Dragoon, Reaper, Ninja, and I leveled Viper mostly through Fates. Viper's fine. I don't have much to say about it because it's already getting a rework two weeks after, you know, or three weeks after X-Pack launch, however long it is. I guess two weeks from the actual launch day, but all closer to three weeks if you played early access. My time is skewed because I'm always like launch day it was early access launch, but it wasn't really, but it was. It's confusing. Uh, so far, I'm really enjoying uh, Dragoon and Reaper. Ninja feels fine. Uh, Viper feels okay. I, you know, gonna reserve judgment till it it gets more finalized. I hope Viper isn't doomed to be like Ninja 2.0, where they're reworking it every patch. I played a little Dark Knight. Um, haven't healed or or really touched anything. I unlocked Pick though, but I didn't really play it. I think I anticipate probably sticking with Dragoon and Reaper. Mostly Reaper if, uh, you know, these early numbers that I'm seeing on, on FF logs are any indicator. It's kind of weird because early in an expansion, the logs get really skewed um, because you get two to three times more people logging a job compared to the others. And you also don't really have gear... Uh, or fights that test certain things like downtime and stuff like that. So I don't know. There's always knee-jerk reactions when X-Packs launch, but right now Reaper is looking really good. It's just got like high potencies. Big bang for your buck kind of situation. Okay, so let's talk about the combat a little bit. Um, I really enjoy the combat design in this expansion. They've upped their game. Like seriously, they've upped their game. It's pretty sweet. You know, I always have been a fan of combat in this game and like I've been a like mid-core raider through and through. Like I'm the most mid-core ass mid-core raider to ever mid-core. I you know, I've been in basically the same static for two expansions and I'd like to I'd like to branch out more, but like I like playing with my friends, man. So, you know, maybe I'll PF some or go do ultimates with some other people, but like I just like playing with my friends. Uh, the dungeons were surprisingly good. I, I enjoyed the dungeons quite a bit. Um, there are a couple annoying... Oh, there's really just one annoying dungeon. Um, it's Vanguard. Uh, I already said I was going to spoil, so I'm just going to let it rip. It was Vanguard. It just, like, has some questionable pulls. Like, why are there so many single pulls? What's going on with the room with the 
out of man toys or whatever. Um, and, and the thing that sucks is there's so much good glam locked behind it. So it's like, I'm going to do the dungeon. That's really cool. I really dig the, uh, you know, tech wear, you know, cyber punk. I don't really think it's cyberpunk, but like gaming RTX on vibes, um, in, uh, in solution nine and, and all that gear. It's, it's cool. I'm excited for Arcadian a lot. Um, just because it's like cool, it's it's more casual and it's just fun. It's just like is they're you, they're clearly going for fun this expansion. Like they they're slated for so much content. You know the the mechanics in these encounters are fun again. Uh, that's that's a big thing. You know I will always love Shadowbringers very dearly, but I think Shadowbringers uh, and Endwalker especially sort of uh went away from the funness in fights and encounter design like you go back and do the stormblood raids and there is some silly shit going on like have you guys done halicarnassus recently there's <laughs> there is some silly goofy things happening in in those old fights um and i'm i'm just excited maybe there maybe it won't be as silly and goofy but the mechanics themselves have very interesting tells and uh yeah as a big E4S Titan fan, I believe is the level 85 dungeon as basically Titan as the final boss. And oh my God, I was, I was so excited about that. Uh, people are bitching a lot about the, what is it? What, what's it's the first boss in the, the spooky dungeon in the expert roulette. I've heard a lot of complaints. I love that dungeon. I love that first boss. I hope it doesn't ever get nerfed. It's fine for a dungeon boss to cause a little pain every now and again, you know? Plus, it's silly. It's like he puts he puts a big noggin on you and then you're like, oh, and you can't move. <laughs> you can't do anything. And then the boys come running at you. Oh, my God. It's so good. Please don't nerf the boys. Uh, the trials were really good. Valigar Monda, you know, it's a wall boss. It was cool, though. Um, Yeah, I didn't really normal mode. I didn't have any like crazy impressions. I thought it was cool. I thought, you know, they're like everything else. There's some like cool, unique tells and fun mechanics and the pacing's pretty good uh Zerol jaw the second trial i did did i do that with trusts i think i did it with trusts especially yeah because i was a little like early in the curve to get to the end of, of the msq and as a dps player i was like oh god okay i'm just gonna do this for trust because the queue was a nightmare queuing for that final uh that final boss i don't even remember its name anymore it's um, kind of, I don't want to say inconsequential, but it, it just feels unimportant. The name of it, you know, Sphine or whatever, uh, her, her like robot AI God form, that one, that fight was really cool. I really enjoy the normal mode. Um, queuing for it took forever, even with like other friends in the party. Uh, I'm very excited for that fight. That fight looks awesome. Like it, it's so awesome. I'm, I'm excited for the EX so much. And I'm really worried they're going to let me down because Ensinger was such a letdown. The EX was just, I, I can't remember being more let down in this video game than Ensinger EX. So hopefully they learn from their mistakes. They leave the phase two in. I know phase two is just anime Wuklamot jumping out in front of everybody, but like, leave it in, man. It's, it's cool. We don't need like the cutscene, but play the voice lines, you know, do a little phase transition. I don't like, I never had an issue with like Hades EX doing all those transitions. That was cool. Like maybe it didn't, doesn't need to be that level of transition. Like there's like four of them, but like, it's fine in an EX. I don't care. I know we're farming these and we're going to do like either 50 or hundred clears of them, um, in a imperfect world that we all live in because the mounts never drop. It's fine, man. I, I personally like, yeah, E1S, that cutscene kind of got grading every week. But if you do a short, concise cutscene, you you switch the song to the second phase like normal, you know, Wukumat's doing her thing, whatever. Just like, just do it, man. It would be like Zeromus, um, because Zeromus had like a similar repeating end of the fight so it's very similar to zero miss in that way where like you get to the last 20 percent the new phase happens and the things just kind of repeat over and over once you know the, the mini dance within then you're good 
like i'm cool with that but please like let 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 the you know the arena change colors and wukulma jump out she's like i fight for my friends speed and you're like wukulma yeah you know <laughs> just like let that happen it's fine it's cool it, 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 i i am sick of i don't want to say sick of but I, I just want there to be the funness in the game the personality the thing that we all fell in love with in the game like yeah sometimes it's a little annoying it, it's fine Maybe you get 10 seconds of your time wasted every time you do the fight, but it, it gives a personality. Uh, the jobs themselves have been pretty fine. I know I early, earlier I kind of blazed over it. Uh, Dragoon's quote unquote rework. Like, yeah, it's reworked, but it's not actually that much different. It's cool. I'm enjoying it. Uh, my alt, you know, I'm going to be playing Dragoon on my alt in the raid tier because I don't want to level multiple jobs on my alt for split clears. So I'll play uh, Dragoon on my alt. Now my main, I'll be playing Reaper. Um, Dragoon's fun. Reaper, it's, you know, it's Reaper. It's a little more busy and I feel like there's a little bit more. There's like a, a you know, Reaper last expansion was almost like you get like a plain chicken breast with like some salt and pepper on it. You know, it was kind of bland. Like it, it looked cool. So maybe not a chicken breast. It was a really cool looking chicken breast. Okay. Imagine a chicken breast was like, it had a mustache and sunglasses and like, you know, it rode a motorcycle. That's what, <laughs> that's what it was. And now instead of all that, it's like, it's fried chicken, baby. You know, like it's a little more, there's a little more stuff going on there. Maybe unintended, probably very unintended fun things like the, uh, uh, for those who don't know, if you start your combo and then you go into your burst, you have to sort of interrupt your burst to keep your combo going, which sounds like dog shit, but it's actually like, I think it's fun. I think it's silly and goofy and it's fun. I feel like people complain about jobs having weird intricacies like that a lot. Um, and like your complaints are valid. Sure. Go do your thing. Uh, but like, I don't know. I I don't have the impact to get the game changed, so I'm just going to accept it for what it is and have a good time. Everyone else can do the complaining. Y'all y'all can go complain. I'm just going to enjoy myself. A ninja feels a little, just feels a little, I don't know. I feel like I'm working really hard and I'm hitting people with like wet, with like a wet paper towel, you know, it, it doesn't feel very strong. Um, and the numbers correlate with that. Uh, I don't have any big issues with it, but it just, it doesn't feel as changed, uh, this expansion as it was last expansion. I'm sure they'll rework it four times before 7.2. It's uh, like, you know, just ninja things. But yeah, you know, I, I enjoy the, uh, empowered, uh, frog and the empowered, uh, what's the OGCD, the 50 gauge spender, the single target. Ninja players know what I'm talking about. The, the empowered version of it looks so cool. It's like the coolest animation in the game. You're doing flips and throwing a million daggers. It's the coolest thing ever, but it's on an OG CD. So you're never going to see the animation play out, which is really unfortunate. Uh, like I said earlier, Viper, I think is it's fine. It's, it's busy. Uh, people are saying it's not busy. It's pretty busy. The AOE is a little annoying to me. I like, I just don't like having to double weave in an aoe it's okay i don't i don't want to double weave my aoe it's it's not i don't, I don't enjoy that I, i'm fine with the single target the single target's fine and the positionals are fine um i'm sure they'll change it and everyone will complain and i'll probably enjoy it more in spite of that uh the ex's i know i'm just hopping all over the place but this is sort of uh you know i want to do something chill i want to make things that i want to make we'll get into it later i know i'm a little all over the place but yeah let's talk about the ex's uh, Valley Garmanda is really fun, man. That is a fast pace, fun fight. Probably the coolest tank buster in the game. Yeah, can we all agree on one thing that the Valley Garmanda EX tank buster is like the coolest one? Because it is. You got the, for those who don't know, you know, the tank hops in like a tower and based off of where Valley Garmanda is facing, it creates a cone behind the tank. So the tank is literally getting in front of everybody and being like, oh, I got you friends. And they're like tanking all the damage. And oh, it's so cool. The flames like part ways around their body. Oh, it's so cool. 
you know, mechanics like that are just new, unique, and fun. And I really hope they keep with that trend. Things got a little stale in Endwalker, it, it, to be completely honest with you. You know, there's the whole meme of like stand and let thing resolve. And I don't think it, you know, it's not as stupid and boiled down as that. Um, but complaints exist for a reason. There there was something there. Things were getting stale. Uh, Zerulja EX was cool. It, it, it's got a lot of cool mechanics. I really like the lines, how like the lines of stacks come at you and like the lines of donut AOEs versus the lines of circle AOEs. It, it's it's like a fun, fast paced fight. It's uh, really, I really enjoy it on melee. I enjoy both fights on melee, I should say. I haven't played really anything else uh, yet because the X pack's been out for two weeks. I've heard some complaints uh, from casters, but you know, how it goes with casters is they, they'll complain and then they go god mode and become better than all of us uh, and realize that it's not that bad whenever they optimize. It just takes them a second to optimize and then they're like, it's fine. And then, you know, it, it's the cycle. The cycle repeats itself. Uh, but yeah, I made a good amount of money farming fates uh, and that was cool. Uh, what else happened? I'm not like a crafter gather guy, so I can't speak on that experience at all. I can say that uh, my good friend uh, and my girlfriend, two, two, two people I hang out with a lot, they've been in the crafter gather space for so like they just they've been in that headspace. I, I worry about them sometimes when they're doing crafting and gathering because they're like, They'll just make noises, you know? It'll be quiet and they'll go, uh, and like, what are you doing? And it's like, uh, I just, you know, I'm, I'm still gathering. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it, I'm, I'm not a crafter gatherer guy. I can't speak on that experience at all. Um, but I am looking forward to my crafted gear. Thanks guys. And my food and pots. Appreciate it. Oh, I did manage to kill both of the, uh, special fates or whatever. Do they call them? Do they call them any? Is there like a special name, like elite fates that I don't know about? I I did manage to, uh, I got the mascot murder one done very quickly, probably within a couple days. I I killed it a couple times, um, within a couple days of me clearing the MSQ, and then Serpent Lord. I just got my second clean kill. I got enough scales, um, for the mount on this this last on Monday. Yeah, on Monday I did. One of them, I joined a party and the dude stopped inviting people, four people in. And I'm like, bro, we need participation. What are we doing here? So I got kind of screwed on that front. I should have just made my own party. Um, but, you know, we got it done. I hopped on, you know, shout outs to Mateus uh, on Crystal. On Monday, Mateus had a Serpent Lord pop and they waited till pull time 20. I was actually already like chilling near an Aetherite. I hopped over. I was in super early. But like shout outs to them because no one else is doing that right now. Uh, all those people that didn't pull um, until 20, sh you, you're the real goats. But I have something to admit to you guys. I was sitting there and I saw the pull time taken down close to 20. I'm going to admit to you at 2001, I pulled. I pulled it because I wanted to feel that feeling. I wanted to feel like we had hundreds of people here. I wanted to feel like the main character, so I pulled at 2001. And then someone in the chat was like, someone pulled. And it's like, dude, we said pull time 20. It was only one second. I've been making glams, you know? I got this. This is like a riff on just kind of a normie glam, but like this is just like my go to. Uh, for the first time, I can afford jet black dye on some pieces, guys, because of all the fates. Uh, those who know me know I'm chronically poor in this game because uh, I have what they call shiny object syndrome where I make enough gill, I see something shiny and I spend the gill on it. For those who don't know, the dyes sort of crashed. I think everyone anticipated dyes skyrocketing, but they actually kind of crashed. Like they were probably two mil for jet black pre x pack launch. And if I go hit the market board right now, they're like 600k. It's kind of crazy. Um, I, I hope some people didn't lose too much money on that um, because that would suck. I've been doing hunt trains, um, trying to get as much materia as I can for myself and my static, or at least the FC mates in my static. You know, in our FC, we have people who sort of delegate themselves to different jobs, and I'm just a combat guy. I don't craft or gather, so 
Uh, I opted for do hunts and get the materia for us. The mute button, shout outs to uh, Yoshi P and the gang for adding a mute button and better uh, blocking functions in this game because holy moly, shout chat is crazy. You will be in the first zone of the expansion. <laughs> You'll be in that first town and people in shout chat will be arguing about fucking whether or not Wuklamot I don't know, twisted their nuts in the third grade. And it's like, bro, who fucking cares? Yeah, the meat button fucking rips. That's the that's like one of the greatest things they added to the game. You just like weed out all of the the absolute cesspool and shout chat. That's really nice. Like, yeah, you could turn off shout chat, but you need shout chat for certain things. It's very useful for certain things. Uh, so, okay, so for the MSQ, I actually wrote out something to get my thoughts on paper. Um, and I'll just read that to you guys. Uh, so I'm going to cut to like a scripted part of the video and then we'll, I'll come back after. Dawn Trail has been out for just over a week and I'd like to put my brief thoughts out into the void we call the internet. The community around Final Fantasy XIV seems very split about their thoughts on Dawn Trail's story as if it was possible for an entire community this large to agree on anything. Bottom line is some people are being critical but fair, some people are being hateful, and some people are just having fun playing a game. It doesn't need to be more deep than that. However, MMO players, form scourers, Twitter users in general have a really bad case of terminally online media literacy. <laughs> People with this dangerous affliction have a tendency to take stance on things and defend their stance with zealot-like tenacity resorted to hateful words and passive-aggressive remarks. Anyways, now that I've properly hopped on my high horse, let's talk about how Naruto became the next Hokage. In Dawn Trail, we're given a simple pitch, sail off into a new land and go on an adventure with Wuklamat, a Hroth girl who dreams of becoming the next Dawn Servant or president of Fantasy Mexico. Other than Wuklamat, there are three other camp counselors trying to get promoted, a cat boy, a two-headed taco-destroying jerk, and uh, a one-headed lizard guy hellbent on war. So you and your gang go off to collect the Jolly Ranchers that unlock the gate to El Dorado, getting screwed with by other camp counselors along the way, making friends with all the peoples of Tyrol. You know, it, it's a simple backdrop for a fun little character-focused adventure, and the main characters set up in the story get a lot of time to shine. Some argue, too much time to shine. You see, in Dawn Trail, we, the Warrior of Light, are not the main character. We play a role of mentor to Wuklamot's learner. A lot of people don't like this, and it makes sense. Some people just want to be the main character of their video game, and can you really blame them? Life is short, and it's tough, man. Sometimes all you want is an escape. I personally really enjoyed taking the role of Jedi Master to Wuklamot's Padawan. The dialogue options let you ask some really insightful questions to her, questions that help her grow as a character and become the anime protagonist she was meant to be. Also, as the Warrior of Light, we've been through a lot of shit lately, like and Walker took us to the edge of the universe to fight a depressed god thing, and I'm totally fine with just chilling, sipping on a painkiller, and beating up some local jerks for a change. About halfway through the story, it's clear that there's something else going on here. After emasculating the Taco Stomper and dunking on the War Lizard, Wuklamod, and Koana, the Catboy, get promoted to Dawn Servant. That's right, we got two Hokages. However, things take a turn for the worse when just shortly after being appointed, the city of Tyrol gets attacked by robot aliens from outer space. And they're led by the War Lizard, and the War Lizard says, Come fight me in my domain. And, and then he pulls out his troops, and, and they're out of the streets, but they fly it, and they're up in the sky. We then have to travel across time and space to take down the War Lizard. Look, I don't really understand all the traveling between shards and the timey-wimey stuff that happens, but we basically have to go to this futuristic land to figure out the answers to it all. And this is where the second half of the adventure begins. And while I enjoyed the first half of the story, the gravity and concepts introduced in the second half had me, like, gamer leaning at my screen, ready to blitz through the rest of the ensuing adventure. We meet War Lizard's queen, Sfien, and learn that here all the people get their memories wiped and souls harvested so that they won't grieve, or something like that. It's super fucked up to think about the amount of control Sfien has over all her people, but they don't seem to mind, because she's very nice to them. I'm sure she's totally chill and not the actual villain of the story. So get this, things are totally not chill and turns out she's the villain of the story. So after defeating War Lizard, we have to go back to get the Jolly Rancher gate into El Dorado, and this time all your friends are here because we needed them to use the trust system for the last fight with the War Lizard. 
You go through the gate and show up in AI Disneyland, a wonderful golden city where nothing is real. We learn Sphine is just an AI with the soul of the original Queen's Fiend somewhere in there. Using her love of preserving her people to literally use the souls and their memory to construct a false heaven for all those little puppets, all her little puppets to live in. As the hero, we unplug the city and defeat the AI god. We all live happily ever after, but with some probably long-term plot consequences. I didn't really care for Sphine, and after she was revealed as the real villain, my eyes rolled back so far to my skull I could see my brain. However, once it started to reveal that she was like an allegory for machine learning, things started to click for me. I don't have anywhere else to put this comment, but the voice acting was great on pretty much all accounts uh, of the acting side. However, there were some voice lines that sounded like they were recorded hastily on different equipment than normal. It could also be mixing, but it really sounded to me like they used several different mics throughout the story, which was really the only jarring thing that took me out of the narrative. I've heard comments of people not liking Wuklamot. I'll just assume that these are like actual criticisms and not thinly veiled transphobia towards the voice actor. To me, she was exactly what you'd expect of an anime protagonist. You know, she resolved to make Tyrol a kind and peaceful place. She has her ups and downs, but sticks with her morals throughout the journey, which I really respect. It's not every day the one note anime protagonist actually is done correctly, but I think Wuklamod is one of my favorite new character additions to 14 in quite some time. My interpretation of this story was all about accepting the reality of life. We're all born here, kicking and screaming, and we've all got an expiration date. Denying that is denying human nature. The golden city that was touted and shown as this perfect paradise, it was nothing more than smoke and mirrors. The people were fake, living fake infinite lives. The environments were fake. Hell, the food was completely flavorless. It doesn't get more devoid of life than that. Wuklamot's journeys had her connecting with everyone she could, trying to understand them. And even if they were being disappointed, agreeable or threatening to harm her, she was still reaching out. It doesn't get more human than that. It's an examination of the overly narcissistic and disagreeable sides of us. If you're willing to look at another person and understand that you're looking into a mirror, there would be a lot less friction in your life. It's cliche, but it's real. If we all spent a little less time stroking our EPs and 240 characters or less, a little more time trying to understand each other through honest conversation, Maybe we can better coexist as people. We could make more lasting friendships with people sharing this common interest despite our differences, live more fulfilling lives, and when that expiration date comes, we know that we've done our best to make the world a better place, leaving behind a trail of understanding, kindness, and respect. Okay, wow, wow, what hot takes about the MSQ. Way to go there, Len. You're really doing it now. <laughs> Here's the bottom line. I'm very optimistic for Dawn Trail. A 7.0 launched in a pretty great state. It was stable. It uh, introduced some unique things. It was everything you could have really asked for out of an X-Pack launch. Uh, the story is maybe a bit divisive to some people, but in reality, it's not that bad. It's it's an adventure. We went on an adventure uh, and yeah, the, the game's working and things are good. I'm very optimistic about the future of Final Fantasy 14 right now. Um, you know, the combat system is really good. The, or at least the, the uh, mechanics and the fights, the jobs themselves are kind of an extension or like a 2.0 version of the Endwalker version of the jobs for kind of a 2.0 of the Shadowbringers version of the jobs, but it, it, it's fine. I'm enjoying it enough. Um, they said that in the next expansion, if I remember correctly, they said in the next expansion, they're going to do... Kind of an overhaul of the jobs and i'm very interested to see because if it is going in the same direction like the way the combat's trending if the jobs trend in that same way then I, things are just going to be great um i'm very optimistic about the future of the game it feels like they're finally using that that big wad of cash they got back pre endwalker like it feels like they're finally spending the giant heaping loads of cash that we've given them in the last few years uh, just with the sheer amount of content and stuff they're adding into the game. You know, I sort of took a break in Endwalker. I took a step back. I didn't really... I, I stopped making videos. I stopped hanging out with Final Fantasy friends. I stopped playing the game. And, and it's like taking breaks is very healthy, but I didn't want to take a break. The game forced me to take a break. Like, I don't live in this game i have a life outside i've got a full-time job i got all their things going on i have another youtube channel dedicated to an entirely different genre of games i 
started going back to school. I do all these other things. I play D&D. You know, I I do all these other things and and Walker at the end of the day did not couldn't fill the time of like 2 to 3 hours a few nights a week for me. It just it didn't satisfy me. Unfortunately, like I just didn't enjoy the savage raids as much. The ultimates were pretty good. I didn't complete either of them, but I got too enraged in the final phase of top and I got to double dragons and DSR. So I got pretty far. I'm sure I'll complete them at some point this expansion. It's just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic about the game, optimistic about the future, and I'm happy to be playing the game I love so much again. You know, I'm happy to be excited to play 14 because I've missed it. I genuinely have missed it. Uh, I, in the spirit of enjoying the game again, uh, on this channel, I actually re uh, publicked a lot of old 14 videos that I felt like I had to take down. You know, I got into like VTubing and all that stuff. And like, I never consider myself a VTuber, uh, quote unquote, like VTuber. I just like, I wanted to use a cool model and do cool things and play the game. But I feel like doing that lumped me into sort of a category of people that I don't identify with or like, you know, people who, who enjoy this specific kind of humor or like it, it you know, do the, the VTuber thing where they're like, you know, we do a debut and all that. like, I, I'm just not, I was never interested in that stuff. I just wanted to like make a cool anime guy and like have fun making content. Um, and I feel like I, I not only did other people put me in that box, but I also put myself in that box. Like I convinced myself I needed to be someone who I wasn't. Um, so yeah, I, I'm, I think I'm done doing that. Like I, I might stream or make content or, or YouTube videos here uh, with that model. I don't know. I might not have anything. I might go back to my camera. Um, <laughs> I might go back to using my pretty old face. I don't know. And I don't know. Maybe I'll never make a YouTube video on this channel again. I don't think that's likely. I kind of want to make things... Um, but in the past, I felt like I had to make very specific things, and now I just want to make whatever the fuck I want to make, uh, and I'm going to. Um, if you, if you want to see the other stuff I've made recently, I, I do have another channel. Um, like I said, I'll link it below or in the pinned comment. Uh, but it is a fighting game channel. I play fighting games. I've played fighting games my whole life. I played fighting games before 14. I'll play fighting games long after 14's dead and gone. I. Yeah, uh, two X Chaos coming out. It's Riot's fighting game. I'm gonna be very focused on that over there. If you're interested, it's cool. I've made like some cool little uh, video, video. I don't want to say documentary. What's the video essays over there um, that are neat? And I think at least a couple of them also could apply to 14, like rating stuff. Um, but yeah, this. I rambled, but I felt like I needed to ramble. I just wanted to get things off my chest uh, for the sake of this YouTube channel and for the sake of just getting my my love of the game out there and making something about 14. I don't know what I'm going to make here. I might just do more rambly kind of this is my journey. This is my game. You know, talk about things, blah, blah, blah at you guys. Uh, and if you if you enjoyed the video, let me know, because this isn't something I've ever made in the past. I'm very much a scripted video guy, but this is nice. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for watching. If you're still watching right now, that's kind of crazy to me. Um, and yeah, I will maybe see you soon. <laughs> I'll probably see you soon.